Philosophical thinking begins with the human subject. This is a shared belief of existentialist philosophers, who see us human subjects as the acting, feeling and living individuals that we are. Their core idea is that we start out with an existential attitude, which is characterized by disorientation, confusion or dread in the face of an apparently meaningless or absurd universe. During the course of our lives we therefore adopt meaning and values from our environment in an attempt to overcome this fundamental confusion. Starting here, existentialism can teach us key insights we can use to fully develop our human capacities to live happier lives. We, as the subjects of our experience, cannot escape the role with which we give rise to meaning in our world. Without ourselves, there would be no meaning in the world. Every one of us creates meaning in his world, whether we are conscious of it or not. It is therefore impossible for us to rely on any outside authority to give meaning to our life and solve this fundamental issue for us. To develop an understanding of these issues, we will take a deeper look at existentialism, namely at its core seven ideas, authenticity, existence and essence, the absurd, facticity, the other, existential angst and dread, and despair. Acting authentically. The authentic act is one that is in accordance with one's freedom which means that we take responsibility for our decisions and give different values to the options from which we can choose. We consciously measure our values against our experiences and fully embrace the freedom we have. Denying our freedom and creating illusory limitations is acting inauthentically. Other forms of inauthenticity is believing in determinism or acting as one should. With these insights we begin to understand that we can't fully develop and live up to our desires and dreams without removing psychological barriers and take responsibility for creating our own authentic meaning in life. Living with authenticity is one of our greatest challenges. How do we know what is right and what is wrong? The meaningful decisions in our life often have to be made solely by ourselves. For once we have to create a meaningful path for ourselves with certain values and then live in alignment with those. Living with authenticity does not mean that we always stay true to our chosen course and never change our mind. The world also demands our psychological flexibility. Embracing fundamental freedom of existence. On a very basic level, existentialism is a philosophy of freedom. The goal is to free the individual from his own psychological restrictions and mental problems so that he is able to develop himself to his fullest capacity. As much as there must be external circumstances for a human being to thrive, there must be the right internal environment for full psychological development. For most of us this means eliminating, restricting and false beliefs and replacing them with a deeper understanding of our own psychology and fundamental truths of reality. And here is where this philosophy becomes very practical for our personal development. On a fundamental level we are existence, not influenced by any circumstances of our time and locality. On top of that, existence as a human being can craft the level of essence. Sartre describes the essence as all the labels, roles, stereotypes, definitions or other preconceived categories we like to describe ourselves with. Claiming we can be anything we wish is true but only in so far as that we are still responsible for our actions and their consequences. Our actions influence and are influenced by our environment, therefore acting as a powerful limitation to our freedom. 
Man first of all exists, encounters himself, surges up in the world, and defines himself afterwards. The absurd. Understanding that the world is inherently meaningless and that you create your own meaning can quickly lead to the notion that there is no meaning to anything and that everything is fundamentally pointless. But that belief itself stems from a fundamental misunderstanding of what meaning is and how it is created. In fact, an individual with a nihilistic worldview might adopt this depressing notion only because he has unconsciously infused himself with negative meaning around meaninglessness, saying that meaning does not exist independent of us in the outside world is different from denying its existence entirely. Just as we wouldn't say that feelings don't exist only because they can't be found independent of ourselves. Our feelings are intuitively very important for us and we never question their validity as they can be powerful forces in our lives. Similarly with meaning, we as human beings are intimately involved in the process of bringing meaning into this world. Just as a tree is dependent on the ground, the water and the air in order to grow, in the same manner meaning is dependent on the psychological environment of a human being in order to come into existence. The one is of physical nature, the other is of psychological nature, but on a fundamental level both of them exist in their own way. The fact that things, in this case meaning, do not have an independent existence outside of us does not make them less relevant and through an understanding of the underlying mechanisms we can transcend confusion and despair. Facticity the limiting nature of the past and our freedom in the future and the now. Our authenticity builds on the acceptance of our past. Embracing and understanding our past enables us to make decisions in line with our values and goals in life. Our past experiences are the foundation on which we build our projections of the future. To arrive at a realistic picture for our future, we have to walk a fine line between the freedom of choices we are faced with and the limitations our past experiences place upon those choices. We have to be careful though not to let the fear of uncertainty push us to either side of the line and fall for the excuse of determinism or let the sheer number of choices overwhelm us. The last aspect of existential freedom we are faced with is that we can change our values. This makes us responsible for our values on exactly the level of our understanding. We are not responsible for the decisions which source of motivation we do not understand. Increasing our awareness and our psychological understanding makes us therefore more responsible for our actions. While this can sound burdensome, it comes with the benefit of being the master of one's life to an ever greater extent, being able to more often make intelligent decisions that are in line with one's values. To the extent that our understanding grows, our impulsiveness and reliance on primal patterns of behavior diminishes. The other, how we know objectivity. Through our understanding of other persons, we define what is objective reality and what we ourselves are. Only through the idea that others share the same objective world can we become aware of our own existence. Others place a limit on our freedom, in the sense that we imagine ourselves as we are seen through the eyes of others. The perception we believe that others might have of us is actually the mechanism by which we define the external part of who we are. With all the judgments about our external actions and whether they are right or wrong. Understanding that we actually project onto others 
the values which we think they have, including their judgments about our actions, allows us to avoid conflicts and misunderstandings. Existential angst and dread. Encountering the ultimate freedom. If we contemplate deeply enough all of what has been said so far, we might find ourselves at a point where we feel the ultimate freedom. The inherent lack of predetermined actions and the degree to which we are responsible for our actions. We come to realize that we could label ourselves not responsible only for those decisions for which we do not have sufficient understanding. The angst that comes with this realization is different from fear in that it has no object which could be removed to alleviate the feeling. This existential angst, on the other hand, can be alleviated through a deep understanding of the underlying mechanisms of reality. Despair and how not to lose hope in the face of the breakdown of one's own identity. When we find out that nothing outside of ourselves defines us, that no values or morals are inherent to the world, we might find ourselves in a hopeless state. Those breakdowns of identity might come about by some external event. For example, when a musician loses his ability to play without anything else to fall back on, he might feel his entire identity to be compromised. Existentialism tells us that as long as we place our sense of identity on any qualities that can crumble, we are in a constant state of despair. We constantly fear the disintegration of our identity. To resolve this fear and also to end this video, I will quote to you from the book Works of Love by Kierkegaard in the hopes that you like this video and will share it with everyone who can benefit from a piece of practical philosophy. When the God-forsaken worldliness of earthly life shuts itself in complacency, the confined air develops poison, the moment gets stuck and stands still, the prospect is lost, a need is felt for a refreshing, enlivening breeze to cleanse the air and dispel the poisonous vapors lest we suffocate in worldliness. Lovingly to hope all things is the opposite of despairingly to hope nothing at all. Love hopes all things, yet is never put to shame. To relate oneself expectantly to the possibility of the good is to hope. To relate oneself expectantly to the possibility of evil is to fear. By the decision to choose hope, one decides infinitely more than it seems because it is an eternal decision.